Our next guest is back by popular demand. Good friend of ours, good friend of mine. He is the X Man, Tony Freeman. What's up, Dave? Got you back here. We re- tried to record back. before. We had a little technical difficulty. We're doing this again, and uh, it's going to be better than ever. Uh, Tony, I saw you at the LA Fit Expo last weekend, and uh, you looked great. You had the uh, X Pain booth you were at. You had your little corner section off there. The fans were yep. mobbing you, and uh, all, right. all seems good in your world. It was good, man. You know, I've just been taking it slow these last, I don't know, I guess it's been like six, seven weeks since the uh, Master Show. I've just been taking it easy, letting my body heal, topping off all my essentials, <laughs> getting ready for the season. Well, so, feeling good. You know, we have a, we have the Bros vs. Pros Strength Challenge, right. number 10 coming up. And I said to myself, who would I want to get for Bros vs. Pros 10, or Bros vs. Pros X, as we're calling it? I said, right. the, my dream pick would be Tony Freeman, the X-Man, because that would be, you know, it'd almost be like uh, heaven sent. And I said to myself, right. Tony's always traveling, he's busy, he's competing, he's dieting. And you know what? For some reason, uh, the universe must have opened up its arms to us and said, we are going to give you the X-Man because you're not dieting, you're not competing, nope. you're not traveling that weekend, and... Uh, we got you. You agreed to it. Yep, I'm ready to do it. <laughs> you know, I haven't, I haven't, uh, you know, before I tore my pack, I was, you know, I wasn't like a super strong, but I could do a lot of reps with 225 and 315. And I was doing 405 sets of 12. So, but you know, we'll see. I'm up for the challenge. I haven't, I haven't definitely haven't done a, any kind of co- competition like that since I really tried out for football. You know, back in the nineties, right? So. Well, we're, call, we're calling this Bros vs. Pros 10, the X-Man takes on the world because you are opening up, uh, we are opening up this competition to anyone who wants to come down and see if they could outbench you for 225 pounds, four reps. It will be taking place on Sunday, March 18th at the West County Health and Fitness Center in St. Louis, Missouri. It's the one, it's the same weekend as the St. Louis Pro Show. Uh, Jack DeTony's Hydrolyze Ultra will be the main sponsor of that event. And, uh, really, uh, people can come down. You're going to go last. Whoever gets to uh, who puts up the most amount of reps is going to walk home two thousand dollars richer. So there is some cash on the line here. Oh, I know no, there's it's going to be people lining up around the block. Oh yeah, you know what bodybuilders will do for money. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so cool. you know you're going to have some uh, some heavy hitters come down there who are going to want bragging rights to say that they beat the X Man. And I, I know you. You're a fierce competitor. You were uh, you know an athlete in, uh, growing up, and uh, you don't like to lose. Not at all. Not at all. So I will definitely be training for this specifically. So I won't make a fool out of myself. You, you're also one of these guys that I, you're like a clutch player. You're, you're, you're the kind of guy that's like cool under pressure. You're, you're always, you're, you're able to perform, um, you know, when, when the chips are down and when all the, well, you know, everyone's expecting you to just, you know, drop out of existence. You come back, you win a pro show. You know, I was watching the Super Bowl and, you know, Eli Manning is, is a guy like that too. He seems to perform better under pressure. Do you like, do you like it when you have to, when you, when you're forced to almost put out your best effort? I think it's been like that all through my life, you know, high school, um, college, even grade school, you know, just doing stuff um, under pressure, you know, needing to perform. I've always been a performer ever since I was a little kid. So um, I, I um, revel in the, you know, the, 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 the chance to, uh, you know, shine or step up at the last minute. You know, when I played basketball, that was my one of my favorite things to do is, you know, hit the shot at the buzzer or something like that to win the game. But, yeah, I enjoy it. How do you uh, quiet your mind to the point where you can just focus on every nothing that's around you but just on what you're doing? Because a lot of people get distracted. They allow the pressure to, to, to beat them. Uh, I see so many bodybuilders choking and, and screwing up at the last minute. How do you keep your head straight like that? Well, in the past, I have been one of those guys who choked at the last minute. You know, now I kind of just... You know, I treat it as another day at the office. And, you know, like like I always tell people, I don't celebrate when I win, I don't cry when I lose. It's like, you know, it's my job. It's something that I have to perform at my best, no matter what the outcome. And I just treat it like that. And, you know, when, you know since bodybuilding is not something that's cut and dry, I think it's easier 
for me. It used to be harder because I used to put a lot of emotion into it, but now it's business, so I, I understand the game. I understand how it works. Um, can it be better? Of course it could. So you know, but you know, I, I play the game and you know, I, and I try to get the best out of it and, and try to enjoy myself more than anything. Now, you have a son who's a, a, an excellent athlete. Would you, what kind of advice do you give him so that he can, you know, have that same cool demeanor when he's playing his sports? Um, he's so gifted. You know, he runs track. So gifted and so talented. I'm actually encouraging him to seek out stronger competition because I've, I've watched him in the track meets and he, he never loses. Really? So, in my opinion, I think he needs to race some people that are, you know, already faster than him, you know, by the clock anyway. Right. And see if they can't pull that extra gear out of him and see if she can see how fast he really is. So I just tell him to all and, and I was like that when I was a kid. I always played with the bigger kids. You know, when I was a kid I played with grown men. When I was a little kid I played with big kids. I always played with people that were better than me, or bigger than me, that were supposed to be better than me. So that way when you do, you know, get a shot on them or make a tackle on them or whatever it is you're doing, um, you know, that you know that you're really good and it's not just luck because you're, you're playing against competition that's, you know, challenging you to, to do better and be your best. Mm. Now, what, is, what events does he do in track and field now? He runs the 100 meter and he runs the 4 by one mm. uh, 400 to 200. Um, he, he's, uh, he, just, he just got... Uh, um, Academic All American and Athletic All American for in you know you know in track and in, in with his grades and with his skills on the track. So I thought that was pretty cool. Were you were you a good student in school? Or did you not like the study and stuff like that? I did really well all the way till my senior year. My well, senior year I only had to go to school till ten thirty, <laughs> so I had like two classes. <laughs> and so you know what I'm saying I, I did really well like one through ten, one through eleven. Well, that's all that matters, of course. Yeah, I mean, I, I pretty much gra- could have graduated early, but uh, we moved, and I just said, well, you know, I'll, I'll get out of school half a day and go to work. So I started working in uh, 11th grade. Uh, I didn't know. Um, okay. Yeah. Did you didn't, uh, when did you actually have your first uh, child? 23. Yeah, you were young. Yeah, yeah. I got married at 21, and then I had my first one at 23. That's uh, yeah, he's asking. He just turned twenty two. That's I was gonna say. He, he, your your kid is like, you know, he can be. Yeah, a, yeah. It, it can happen any moment. Yeah, <laughs> you can be a grand grandfather. Yeah. yeah, my brother. My brother is. Um, my younger brother is a grandfather already. Um, my sister is not. So yeah, uh, you know, it's very highly possible. I, I think that he's so focused on what he's doing. Yeah. Um, that you know, I, I really don't fear it. I mean, if it happens, it happens. Yeah. But I really don't fear it because you know he, he's starting to realize what he has in front of him. So I, I'm hoping, and, and I'm pretty sure he is going to just you know end up playing football his last two years and, and probably trying to make the Olympic team uh, next year, or if not, then 2016. What kind of time does he run for the hundred? Right at ten seconds. 10 wow! Really? Yeah. That's that's yeah. world class. I know, bro. He has a forty-four and a half inch vertical leap. Oh my God! What's his What's his I mean, name? Uh, Nico Freeman. To Nico Freeman. Wow, we got to keep keep your eye out for him. State. And and you know, really, um, probably towards the end of the year, I'm gonna put him in men's physique. I mean, he really? can literally win men's physique like right now. I no just shave him down and put him up there <laughs> just right now today. <laughs> I'm I mean, more impressed with his hundred meter time. That's incredible. Yeah, he's he's like. Um, I, you know, I was pretty fast, but I never really, you know, I didn't really, I ran track like in eighth grade. Yeah, I didn't yeah. never really pursue it. And, mm-hmm. um, man, he's, he's a beast. That's he crazy. really, really is. Does he have a scholarship yeah. for that? Yeah. He's yeah, I would think so. Oh, macro. Yep. You're lucky. Yep. Save your his fortune. His ability and, and his, you know, his, his, his speed, and he, his speed over a longer time. I think he can really be good at the 200 if he practices. Because mm-hmm. he can, he, you know, he can maintain his top speed for a long time, and he gets there really quickly too. So, what does what he long jump? He just started long jumping. I'm not sure, but uh, I know his standing broad jump is like ten eight, ten oh nine. Oh my god! And yeah, he's a freak. It's, it's he's like a, his leaping ability is. It's our garage ceiling is twelve feet, I and mean, he can put his palm of his hand on the ceiling. Oh my god! How tall is he? Five eleven. Wow! What a jump! He's not that tall. I wish he was a little bit taller. Yeah. Man. But you know. I mean, I, he's a perfect height for a cornerback or 
You know, and then when he's 25, 26, 27, we can put him in the bodybuilding. He's, 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 uh, Forget bodybuilding. He Let the kid make some money in football. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, like if I told him, I said, you know, go ahead and do track and football. And when you retire, you'll still have time to be a bodybuilder. Yeah, when he's 40, look at you. He can, just, yeah. he can go into bodybuilding at 40 and be fine, yeah. Yeah. 35. But let's talk about you, though, because for for a guy who could possibly be a grandfather, you're pretty in uh, I see at the booth and you know, many people might not watch. you. I was watching you at the L.A. Fit Expo and I got to be honest with you. And, and I've told you this before, but when I was at a booth, OK, at 300 something pounds and I was always in good shape, I would get tons yeah. of people coming over for autographs and pictures and 90 percent of them, probably 95 percent of them were guys. They wanted to know advice on how to train, how to take supplements and what I did and, 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 and diet and stuff. And uh, maybe one or two girls would come over the whole time. You got like at least 50 percent women at the booth, at your booth. All oogling, googly eyed over you. I, I I can't believe it. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it's pretty crazy, bro. This this weekend, it was a lot of uh, fans there. Period. But it was a lot. Of, it was like it was like fifty fifty women. Like normally, most of the, the expos and stuff, it's a lot of guys. But it was a lot of women there. Um, I actually got to meet uh, Denise Milano. Come on, what's her last name? You know what I'm talking about? Alyssa Milano. She just. No, Denise. He just won the, the Excalibur. Ex Excalibur. Oh, I don't know. I don't remember. You got to look her up, bro. Okay. Oh, she's like ridiculous. All I know is I couldn't. There was one girl hotter than the next coming to your booth. I was like in shock. Yeah, it was, it was a bunch of them. They, they all, you know, they love the X Men, brother. I mean, that's, you know, you know what I'm saying? What do they, they like about you? Me. How can they like you so much and they don't like these other guys? Well, I'm a real man. I'm a real dude. I'm not saying that these guys aren't, but what I'm saying is I'm like their, I'm the image. I'm their. A vision of what it, what it should be. You know what I'm saying? So it's more like fitting the mold. I, I learned at a young age how to, you know, how to attract women. And that's one of the main reasons why I picked up bodybuilding because I knew, I know what women like. I, I watched them, I listened to them. I mean, I was the dude who couldn't get the girl, but the girl would tell me all her problems about, oh, you know, this dude and that dude. And I yeah. learned a lot from that. I did that for like my whole high school career and I took notes and you I studied. learned. You studied. I studied. <laughs> what what so, does it, tell us what a girl wants, please. We're all trying to figure this out, Tony. They want you to listen to them. They tell you exactly what they want. Each woman is different. Uh -huh. And if they, if they open up themselves to you, they'll tell you exactly what they want. And they'll say it like in a joking way, you know, or like, you know, like it's a fantasy type thing. But if you're, if you're a guy who can provide that and you really want the girl, then, then, I mean, you know, it's not like they keep it a secret. Some, some women like to play games, of course, because they don't want to be the first ones to get hurt. Mm -hmm. But when they find the guy that they like, all you gotta do is really just listen to them. You know? See, I mean, we actually so, yeah, have to yeah. listen to what they're saying. Is that the pro my problem? Well, you, you have to listen to what they're trying to say, <laughs> not exactly the words. Sometimes the words are, you know what I'm saying? You kind of gotta read between the lines. So they don't want people guessing. They like that fantasy, romantic, right. fairy tale. Type of, type of situation. And you, and you so, fulfill those. Either that or they like the bad boy who just like choke them or smack them around. That's you know? right. You they're fulfill like that, these, you fulfill the like, women's hey. fantasies. Is that what you're telling me? I try to. Yeah. I try, try to. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 mentally, it's nothing else. Yeah. Sometimes that's all it takes. Yeah, you're right. Get inside their head, you know. You're 100% right.